The new paintings are about my childhood in England and they're all painted from memory, which was quite a challenge for me. Uh, I'd never really worked from memory before uh, and the idea of working without reference was a little bit frightening, uh, but in a way also uh, very freeing. We're dealing with invention and uh, invention and memory have a, a very close and, and strange relationship. Uh, I remember that the great Italian filmmaker Federico Fellini once said that uh, his work wasn't really autobiographical. It was rather that he had invented a childhood, invented a past, he said, for the pure pleasure of being able to recount it. And in a way, I think that's what I'm doing with these paintings. I'm, I'm reaching for a memory, and memory itself turns out to be very fragile, very shifting, we think we remember things and, and then we don't remember them at all. I find when I examine what I think I have in my head as a, a picture of some childhood event, uh, on closer examination, it evaporates or dematerializes. Uh, when I do remember things, often they seem to be uh, remembered from an angle I couldn't possibly have been at. I, I think of scenes seen from on high, a much higher angle than I could ever possibly have had as a child. So, uh, memory and invention have a, a, a relationship. Invention tends to take over, it tends to mold and form and make present uh, uh, impressions that, that in themselves don't cohere that well. Uh, I'm very interested in these paintings in the power of gesture and pose. The idea that I can take a, a figure and actually make it read as performing a specific action, someone picking something up off the ground, embracing someone in a certain way, pulling somebody, fighting. Um, the idea that I have some control over those things I find intriguing and it's a, it's a part of painting that <clears throat> in a way was given up with the 20th century when photography seemed to take over that, that whole realm of narrative art. Uh, and at the same time, it's something that, that say, the field of illustration doesn't always, you know, often doesn't deal with at all either. And it's very much left to, to cartoonists or animators to uh, deal with, with how to uh, marshal expression and, and make it read and, and, and make it feel palpable. And I think it's something painting can do quite well. There have been one or two people who have taken it on. Uh, Balthus, for instance, employed this very strange feel for gesture where he would overstretch a gesture to the point where it becomes somewhat mysterious or unreadable. You get a strain in the position that, that makes you think that something's going on that you're not quite sure of. And, and that's very effective in his paintings. I was more interested in the idea that I could sometimes exaggerate gesture but still make it read. Uh, and make it read in a way that paintings from the deep past perhaps sometimes read. I was thinking particularly of an artist like Bruegel and some of the other Flemish artists where you get a, um, a, a very narrative look at, at people doing things in a very specific environment. But it's a way of showing them that's very painterly, that's very much to do with the world of painting that isn't really that, that real. It's a sort of represented or reinvented uh, world. In fact, the whole idea of the world reinvented as painting is something that intrigues me. Uh, if you think, say, of the work of Vincent van Gogh, how uh, so many of his paintings are ostensibly paintings of real places, but in fact the language of the painting is radically different from the language of realism. The world is rebuilt again in paint and gesture and mark and color uh, in, in a way that's completely unexpected. Uh, to the um, eye that would say be used to photography or used to painting prior to, to Van Gogh. So painting is a reinvented world, painting uh, using the paint itself as the medium th through which things are remade intrigues me. Organizing the color for light and also using the color as identity, as a certain kind of look or feel or a, to have a certain kind of evocation also interested me. In these paintings, I've, I've used the color in a way that I feel evokes 
the world of childhood. It's a very rich color. Sometimes it's a little overjuiced uh, in the way that children seem to like color or are attracted to that kind of color. Sometimes it's a little moody uh, and, and sometimes I think a little evocative of the place. But I think in all cases it's somewhat transformative. And again, the, uh, the idea of transport into another kind of world uh, or another remade form of the world is something that I find really intriguing. I think painting does very well. Another issue that came up with these paintings was the idea of putting the paint on with my hands rather than using a brush. Uh, and this is a strategy that makes things deliberately a little rougher or more awkward. There are more accidents. It's very hard to actually really know precisely where a mark is going to go. You can take it off if you don't like it, but you do get a little bit of play in the, the actual drawing and setup from working with your hands that I find triggered, um, found triggered my imagination as I was making the paint. It becomes in itself suggestive. You get this ebb and flow in the space as you're working and a, a sense of accident taking part in the process that you can mold and man manipulate and maneuver with in various ways. Uh, it also gave me, uh, to my surprise actually, a very beautiful surface. I, you know, you know the, the actual touch was much more delicate than I imagined it was going to be. And the surfaces have this rather the, the lovely feel from just having been touched with the finger that you don't quite get with a brush. It's, it's a different feel and look. Really, the idea that painting is always uh, an act of discovery, is always an adventure, uh, is always something where something new, different, unexpected could arise, I find is, is, is what keeps me uh, going or keeps me at it. As soon as it becomes predictable, as soon as it becomes an exercise and simply doing another one just like the other one, uh, then I'm bored to death, I don't want to do it, I feel depressed, I, you know, consider uh, doing other things with my life. So the, the painting has to be exciting for me as an act in, in some way. And if it isn't, I'm dead meat. So I'm always looking, and in fact, my work over the years has involved looking at a number of uh, different ways of making painting, and I've changed maybe more than most artists, and some people would say more than is good for my career, perhaps. But I think it's important always to go into the studio with the idea that you can do anything, that you're not limited by what you did yesterday, that you're not obliged to present a certain look, that you are completely open to any kind of inventive thoughts that come your way. And why not? I mean, what else, why else are we, we doing this other than to, to be inventive and creative and surprising and engaging uh, and to delve into to things that maybe nobody's ever delved into before. Um, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a fantastic uh, thing. Childhood in these paintings was very much a um, childhood in northern England. Probably I'm thinking about the ages of between the age of six or seven and ten years old, um, which was a fantastic age for me. My father was a clergyman and we moved quite a bit as he stepped up from curate to vicar of the parish. Uh, and um, when, when I was seven or eight years old, we moved from Manchester, which was uh, a very dirty, gloomy place in those years, a sort of heavy, polluted uh, atmosphere. Uh, and we moved to Blackpool by the sea, which was a much fresher place. And we lived in a kind of outskirts of the city, semi-suburban, and went to the local school. And it was a very homogeneous northern English life where kids played soccer and cricket in the schoolyard and the girls played netball and we uh, learned our ABCs and uh, studied um, simple math and poetry and sang English folk songs and where I rode my bicycle to school every day and rode my bicycle out into the countryside with my friends during weekends. Uh, rode my bicycle everywhere in fact, bike was a lifeline. Uh, and we played all the usual kids' games, tag and hide-and-seek, uh, etc. And the high point of the day would be stopping in the sweet shop, or what Americans call the candy store, after school and ordering sweets from the big jars that were lined up on the shelf 
behind. We used to buy them by the quarter ounce. Weekends sometimes would find us picnicking or going to the park. English parks are interesting because so many of them are now public parks, but were once uh, the estates of wealthy people. So you go into a, a local park and find often rather grand landscaping, um, ornamental lakes, follies, castles, uh, built uh, in an age when there was an enormous amount of wealth in the country and now presided over by the local council. There are always kids to play with. Uh, in those years, we all went out to play. We would go to the streets, to the playing fields. Nobody was keeping tabs on us particularly. Uh, we were very free as children in a way I think that children are not free these days. Children now are, seem to be corralled and ferried from activity to activity. We were, we were free to cycle off to friends' houses and stay till all hours and be out in all weathers and do all kinds of things and uh, we were very independent. Home life was life also with siblings. There were sibling quarrels. My brother and I were I think like most sets of brothers spent our childhood doing stuff together and beating the heck out of each other and generally chumming around. Um, but it was a, a lovely, intense life at home. We loved doing all the things boys loved doing. We built model kits and railways and uh, collected toys and, and you know, played with the dog, played bows and arrows, cowboys and Indians shot at each other, built things, built Lego. Everything, you know, it's all that British home, British at home boy hobby toy development that, that goes way back into the past. We, we have Nikano sets and Rector sets of various kinds. So, yeah, the, the, the nostalgia of the work I think is there. There's also sometimes some irony, some admission of the deviousness and, and, and um, cruelty and mischiefness mischievousness that comes with childhood as well as the the slightly gilded look at childhood the sort of golden haze that uh, tends to envelop it from this far in the distance and um, uh, you know I hope the paintings convey all of that all of it